Cool. All right, so we're officially recording. Welcome to our 55th ever knowledge drop. It's kind of cool how many we've done at this point. Now, actually, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, but thanks to, thanks to those who found the link and have joined for today's topic. And thanks to you, Melissa, for being our guest of honor and reaching out about presenting on this topic. It's one that we haven't done yet. And obviously, with 50, 54 previous topics, there's a lot of subjects we have covered, but this is a brand new one for the nation. And I think it'll be really helpful, especially for those people who are you know, still getting ready to leave for a big trip um, or thinking about doing something like remote year. So, let me get some of the housekeeping stuff out of the way and I'll pass it over to you. Firstly, if you guys see at the bottom of the Zoom room, there's a chat box. Make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees, that little blue bubble. That way when you type stuff like this, everybody can see what you're typing in there and feel free to keep the chat box lively. Comment on whatever you want to as we go, um, as Melissa goes through her slide deck and we go through the knowledge drop. And then you'll also find that there's a Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom room screen too. You can go ahead and at any point during Melissa's presentation, if you're like, wait, what is a what is a wet brush compared to a dry brush or any, anything like that? Any questions you might have, you can pop them in that Q&A box um, and we'll try to get to those as many, as many of your actually live audience questions as we can at the end of the knowledge drop today. So also, as I mentioned, this is getting recorded. This will live on in the, the YouTube knowledge drop archive with all 54 other previous knowledge drops that have been given by the remote your community. Um, so yeah, you can find this and share it around after Melissa wraps it up today and, and we finish with this wonderful knowledge drop. So thanks again for being here. And with all of that stuff out of the way now, let me pass it over to you, Melissa, for this, for the tech challenge of the day of screen share, <laughs> present mode. I think you got it. I think we're going to nail it. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. <clears throat> and hello, everyone. I am getting to present mode. Looking Travis, good so far. I know you're not going to need much of this information that I have here today, but um, if, you, if there's any question you have about what type of panty is the best one to pack or anything like that, you just be sure to shout that out to me, okay? I'm happy to help. <laughs> I spent hours watching YouTube about everything from a backpack to uh, what makeup to pack. So I tried to condense everything for you guys, and, and I am um, a hairstylist. This is called Smart. Uh, uh, and essential beauty tips for the long-term travel. And <clears throat> the, oh, it's not turning, hold on a second. Okay, there we go. Um, what this knowledge drop is about. It's a short and simple list of toiletries to pack on a learn journey. It's makeup essentials to pack and go in a hurry. Products that everyone in every climate could use in every climate condition. And there are some things that you're going to notice that I wish I had known before I started with remote gear. So I'm trying to condense everything down for you so this can be your one knowledge drop and you can be on your way and traveling uh, with ease. Why am I dropping it? I am a salon owner, a hairstylist, a former platform artist, and a blogger on Facebook. And I'm inviting you to join me at Melissa Twig Talks One. And it's a channel about beauty and inspiration where we do review products. So some of the products that I'm reviewing today, I've already known a lot about for a long time, and they're tried and true. And so I wanted to share them with you. Doesn't mean they're all gonna work for you. It just means that they work for me and some of my clients. And so I thought I would share them with you. Uh, I am currently traveling Latin America with my uh, Abiona tribe and having a great time. I am right now in Lima and headed to Colombia after this. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I do need to let you know that this is not necessarily the opinion of a remote year. This is my opinion about things that I uh, enjoyed in things that worked for me. So the perfectly packed toiletries bag. The first thing that I did when I found out I was going to leave with remote year is I took a paper list and stuck it close to where I got ready. And I just wrote things on the list. Then I came back as I got ready to pack and came closer to packing, I put the notes inside my smartphone and I put a little check box beside them so I could make everything really super quick, fun and easy. And so I have two lists, one is for winter and one is for summer and I will encourage you to do that. And I also will encourage you to look at the weather for the countries that you're going to be in. Because in our Latin American tour, we're actually going from really cold and to really warm. So we had to have a little bit of everything packed. 
Uh, so I'm not going to read each one of these to you. I'm just going to hit a few highlights as we go. And thankfully, you'll have this list in front of you. And hopefully, that'll make everything really, uh, really quick for you. But with your toothbrush, do make sure that you bring a good toothbrush. Do not do the travel toothbrushes because they are flimsy and they will not work very well. So the ones that you get at your dentist is also a, a really great choice. Shampoo and conditioner, do not stress about this. And remember that Shampoo and body wash is the exact same thing, so don't get all stuck in all that either. Um, if you have something that is hard to, this is very special to you. In other words, if you've got some wild curly hair or if you've got skin problems and, or if a de certain deodorant works for you, I highly recommend that you bring those. I learned the hard way that I don't, I'm not going to be able to find my deodorant here. Um, so try to gauge how much of that product you use and then go and uh, make sure that you have that much per month that you are traveling with because that does turn out to be a pretty big thing for us ladies. Um, the climate in uh, Santiago and Lima has been very dry and I, I vastly underestimated how dry it was going to be. Uh, but I did have a face cream that works uh, all the time and it's just about in every country too. And it's an oldie but goodie, it's the Pond's facial cream. Uh, they have different varying amounts of it, but they do have it in a travel size, very light uh, plastic uh, container. And I keep the containers and use it for other things like my cleansers and all. So it's a really great thing to have. And it really does work. And there's varying grades of that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I want you to know is that it's very important that you continue to slough your skin. We lose millions of skin cells every day, but it's very important that you go and um, uh, buff your skin with apricot scrub, with the scrunchie, the net scrunchies that you have for your bath. I keep those inside a Ziploc bag with holes poked in when I travel so that it doesn't get all mildewy. And that's just a little tip that has worked for me. There are two of my favorite products. The wet brush is great for detangling and there's the Pond's cream that comes in travel sections in the stores like Walmart and um, I think it's called Harmons. <laughs> Harmons. And so you can find those just about anywhere. They're fantastic. There is a blow dryer that is the size of your hand. Look at that. And it's great for travel. Uh, make sure with blow dryers, curling irons, um, and I'll tell you about a heating pad that I brought, make sure that you do have the proper uh, converters for every country that you're going to be in. That is not, there's a difference between the one that your phone goes into versus the one that some products like these blow dryers and, and uh, curling irons that go into. So there is a difference. Make sure to do a little research and reach out to your people on your city teams. They will help you uh, to make sure that you have the proper wattage. Otherwise, you've just brought it and you can't do anything with it. Hairspray, I absolutely love the Kenra's travel size hairspray because it looks like a little guy, but it just lasts forever. Unfortunately, I did not bring one. Unfortunately, I cannot find Kenra here, so there's another regret that I have, uh, but I won't make that mistake again. Uh, I left you links here so you can try these guys. They're wonderful. Um, now we have sunscreen in packets. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but they come in little packets like ketchup, and you can just toss them in all sides of your luggage and not worry about it getting squished and, and going everywhere. That's a wonderful thing to have. <clears throat> Portable clotheslines are out there now that don't even require clips, and that's some kind of awesome. We have also learned in these dry uh, climates that we need eye wash and we need nose mist. Uh, it, it really is a big difference, uh, for, especially for me. I'm from Sweet Home, Alabama, and as a result, we have lots of greenery and lots of moisture in the air, so it makes a big difference. And then one thing that I think is a lot of... Uh, uh, politeness going on when you have poopery. <laughs> so I left you a link to YouTube because that is hilarious. It's a three minute thing on YouTube. It's an advertisement for them, but it's just so funny that you can't help but, uh, but love some po poopery after that. And then you want to make sure that you have your unmentionables. And even though I call them unmentionables, I do want to mention that um, I am 56 years old and I did bring one tampon and that's because I'm constantly lying about my age and I thought, you know, if I ever run into anybody and I'm really wanting them to think I'm younger than I am, I maybe I can have the tampon in my purse and kind of drop it out and they'll think I'm still having my period. So I did bring one tampon on the trip. 
<laughs> okay, why is it not changing? Let's go. There we go. Okay, the perfect makeup bag. And this is very short and sweet. BB cream. You don't want to have a lot of makeup on. A lot of times you don't want any on at all. But if you do want to put some on, you might want to put on just a little BB cream. Head out the road. The concealer is very important for anybody over 25 uh, makeup bases and your specific applicators that you have. A lash curler, mascara, and eyeliner. If I were going to have only a few things, it would be a lash curler, mascara, eyeliner, and lip. And that would be all I would have if I could do that. But here's the best thing that I did for travel. And I'm going to try to make sure you can see this. This is my very own palette that I have made up. These guys are magnetic on the bottom. And so I can pick my very favorite colors. And this is my blush. And then I have, I don't have to have anything for my brows now because I have a brown uh, here. I have several of my favorite colors, including the blush. And then I had two brushes. I've lost one, but these are travel size brushes. And so everything is in this one container and I absolutely love it. And I do highly recommend it. I know that Matt Cosmetics does this. Uh, I got this at an Ulta and they, they can, can come in as little as four or five. I wanted five, but they didn't have that. So you can get it smaller than this. But I think this and the package and protection, I just think it's a great idea. And so I would highly recommend that. Your uh, lip colors and also the, the a makeup setting spray, which I never thought I would use, but you, you are so dry that your makeup can look kind of chalky. And so the I put down one of the products, which is MAC, and it will help to keep you kind of dewy and moisty looking. And um, I suggest you put everything in clear bags so you can see what you have right there without having to go and dig in and zip up because I find myself looking for things all the time. Hair there and everywhere. As you are in these drier climates, you will have to use stronger and heavier conditioners. Remember that you can stay in your conditioner overnight. You can put it on under your ball cap when you're touring, but doing deep conditioner is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, let's see, avoid buying um, gels and uh, skincare in the glass containers because they're heavy for your backpack or for your luggage. So just transfer them over. You can find your little guys anywhere that you can refill and they're so much better. I have a medium length of hair and I will never do this again. I, I think you either need to have super short hair or you need to have long hair that is long enough to ponytail because otherwise <clears throat> you're constantly having to fix your hair and I will never do this again. So that's something to think about if you're getting ready to leave and you're thinking about a new do, either go super short or leave it long enough to ponytail, you will appreciate that ponytail down the road. Always use neutral colors. White anything is a bad idea. Uh, I packed a, a visor, a ball cap, and then this really cute, hat that's foldable and scrunchable and this has been all around the world and I thought it was particularly apropos because it has a little frog on there and I've been to the Amazon rainforest now so this hat has been a lifesaver and it's cute left the other morning at 2 30 in the morning pop that hat on it's cute ready to go and uh, no worries about the hair okay if you are a blonde you are going to have a very very difficult time getting your hair done in South America probably Asia as well <clears throat> So you might want to talk to your hairstylist about making sure that you have your blonde hair color, maybe a couple of tubes you can find developer here, but you can actually take it to a hairstylist here. They can apply it for if you need to, or one of your roommates can do it for you. But do remember, if you're blonde, you're going to be in trouble trying to get your hair done. I want to talk a little about moisture. First of all, the thing that you have to remember is that moisture does not always come from without, it comes from within. So if you're not drinking enough water, if you're not eating your fruits and vegetables, um, and if you're enjoying yourself like we have been doing, you might be drinking a lot of wine and alcohol does dehydrate the skin. So a few things that work uh, really well is my very favorite thing, and it's all natural, it's cheap, it's everywhere, and it's coconut oil. Um, coconut oil can be put on at night, especially because it is a little bit thicker. So you'll want to slather that stuff on thickly at night. It can go all over your entire body. I took it out of the glass jar when I was traveling. Uh, 
I would take it out of the glass jar, put it in a Ziploc for the travel, and then put it back in a glass jar when I would get to my, des my next destination or a, a cup so that I could keep it uh, fresh in glass. But uh, if you don't know about pulling, that is something where you gargle and, and um, it helps to, with your breath, it helps with impurities, and you also swallow a little bit. Uh, that also helps inside your body. And I put it in coffee, and then of course I use it as a night cream. And don't forget it can be used on your lips as well. Beware of lip balms. They're a trick. They have products in them a lot of times that will actually make you addicted to the lip balm because um, they are actually exacerbating the problem. So be sure to look, make sure that you avoid these list of things, petroleum, uh, parabens. And if something says that it's organic and has a lot of sunscreen in it, it's not true. It is a trick because sunscreen naturally will not have that much uh, protection to it. So watch out for that little trick because nobody really regulates these companies. Now, <clears throat> the ingredients you want to seek there, vitamin E oils, avocado, coconut oils, organic, watch the labels, and then some of the products that I appreciate are here too, Honesty brand, Juice brands, and 100% Pure. So uh, I do recommend you have a few, you know, like a couple in your uh, luggage, a couple, you can find some things here, but you really don't know, especially if you don't read or understand Spanish that well, you may not know what's in the product. So do bring some of your uh, lip balms along. One thing that I want you to realize is that you should just not panic. Number one, there are stores everywhere in the world. Number two, at every single airport, there are duty-free shops, and you may be able to find your very favorite product there. But if you don't, this is a really perfect time for you to try some new products. And some of the best thing that I've ever done was to uh, you know, play with the products that my roommates have when I've traveled the world. And that has always been so much fun because you get turned on to products that you never would have known about had you not gotten into their uh, products and they got into yours and everybody shares. And so sometimes mistakes are beautiful mistakes and I want you to open your mind and realize that everything's going to be okay. You're not going to die. You're just going to have a new beauty product and that's okay. I also want you to know that in other countries like in Santiago, for example, I was able to find a wholesale beauty supply place and I didn't have to show my license. So you as a regular person could go in there and buy the pro beauty products that are very expensive and get them at a wholesale discount. And that was a really nice surprise for me. I also got some great shoes as, as well. Now <clears throat> for a bonus, I did this and I wanted you to be able to have have all three lists, the makeup, the toiletries, and the carry-on, so that you could just uh, look at this one little webinar and be done. So some tips that I wanted to tell you about. I think that it's a great idea to throw everything in the corner of your closet, except for all those things you have to use on a daily basis, and that way you can have them all together when you finally get ready to pack things out. Um, and then I strongly recommend that you uh, do a practice pack seven to 10 days out because if there's something that's missing on your list or something that you know that you need, like me, I decided to get some uh, wool socks on the very, about three days before I left. So I quickly ordered through Amazon and threw them in and I'm glad I had my wool socks on the trip because we were cold. Um, I do recommend no iron everything. And then I think that you should pack at the last minute, <clears throat> the day before or maybe the night before even uh, as your final pack because that way you won't be getting back into the bag and potentially leaving something at home. I also think you should do black bottom jeans, boots with the fur because black on bottom is everything. I and mean, that way you don't have to worry about things being dirty. I've seen people in gray pants and they have stains. I've seen people in khaki pants and they have dirt on them. Black is just great for all of your bottoms and then you build color on the top of your body. <clears throat> That's just my opinion. Uh, never ever bring new shoes on a trip, never ever. You are walking all the time. If they are not fitting well, or if you don't like them, you are in big trouble. So make sure every pair of shoes that you bring are already broken in, okay? And then this backpack is, uh, shopping for a backpack can be a rabbit hole that you never come out of. So I finally just took a chance and bought this backpack and I love it. It fits in every bin. And I think that it's been perfect for me. I'm, I'm thinking that you could give it a try. It's very reasonably priced. I think it was either 49 or $59 and it's holding up great. And uh, I think that I hit the lotto with this and I'm going to share it with you.
okay? Um, the perfect carry-on, these pants for ladies, they are from Boston Proper, and I just love them. I have had a pair that are like these that look more dressy, and then I have some straight leg pants too. They're very good material, they hold up well, and I highly recommend you give them a try. You can always send them back if they don't work. Another thing that really has worked out well for me is a denim, a light denim over shirt. It can be a shirt, it can be another layer, and it can tie around your waist. So I think that the denim shirt was a winner as well. And I did um, leave some links for some wool socks. Uh, there are several walking shoes that I have really enjoyed from Keen and trying to uh, get even a pair, comfortable pair of sandals that I found. Um, and then I want to show you this little rain jacket. It's been a really great buy too because it folds up into a tiny thing. It's super, super lightweight and it can be a shirt and it can help you when you're in the rain. I really like that. <clears throat> and then the travel bubble jacket is great. Now they can come and pack into a small little container, uh, a little bag, and they're awesome. Uh, I brought a white one, big mistake. Never will I ever do that again. And then when you bring your swimsuit and your cover-up, if you're smart, your cover-up can also be your nightshirt and it can also be a little sundress or something that you can wear during, um, during the day. So that way you're doing, um, doing yourself a favor. <clears throat> a few non-essentials that you might want to consider bringing. This was a last minute decision. I do have a couple of back issues and it is a vibrating of uh, uh, yoga roll and several people have borrowed it I think it was a home run and I would do it again uh, I love it it's a great way to stretch out and feel better um, the live straw water bottle is a great idea and then um, I bought a heating pad and not only have I got to use it for my back or you know if I did a hike I'm kind of achy I can also stick it in the foot of my bed before I get in and I have a little electric blanket when it's cool at night. So I think that that was a home run as well. Another thing that I did was bring this lanyard on my phone, uh, phone jacket and it has been awesome. We've been told to watch after our phones really closely and so I put this on my wrist and I make sure that it's always there and it helps me to not lose the phone even though I did lose my phone. Um, somebody returned it, but look at this guy. This is from the offices, uh, office supply store, and I attached this to my purse. And then when I ask somebody to take a picture, they just have to, they have to take my purse with them. But <clears throat> it has been a winner, and I always know where my purse is. I mean, where my phone is uh, because of this. So I think that was a great uh, idea. Another one. <clears throat> I brought self-defense jewelry. If I'm coming home late at night, uh, I can have this. I didn't have great luck finding some, but this is also, look at this little guy, and it made it through the airport. <laughs> I got one taken up. But I thought, you know, if I have a steak or something, and or if I have a little miniature steak, I could also cut that up. But anyway, it's just a preference, and it made my family feel better, so I did find these. And then another thing that I do that uh, works for me is I have a little change purse on a lanyard. And I do this because my most valuable things, my money, my credit cards and, and insurance card and such is in this wallet along with my change, but it's not with my purse. So if I lose my purse or if my purse gets you know, taken from me or anything like that, I still have all of my most valuable things. And that really worked for me. And I love these guys. In uh, South America, they don't have artificial, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, what do you call it for coffee, you know, the sugars. So there's a lot of sugar and this is stevia and it's flavored, it's wonderful in coffee. And so I brought that along, I'm glad I did. I've already used up one. And, um, and so I think that this is something that you could use. And then I brought an allergy free pillowcase and I had my boys put uh, quotes on it. And this is so that I didn't leave it in the hotel rooms. And my very favorite one that I will leave you with is this one. <laughs> so this way when you get ready to leave, you don't leave it on the bed. You have an allergy free pillowcase and you can use this also to wash some of your finer uh, clothes or your uh, lighter clothes in. My name is Melissa Twig. Here's the way that you can get in touch with me. I would love to have your travel tips and ideas. I wish you a beautiful and safe journey. And I hope that I've helped you to save some time. And um, I'm excited for all of you and I'm excited to meet all of you. So Travis, thank you so much.
That was wonderful. That was such like a good fast pace. You got through so much um, in like 20 minutes. And we actually yeah. do still have a couple minutes for some question and answer and a few people have put some, some questions through. Why don't you exit out of screen share and then we'll go back to just our two faces and we'll try to get through a couple questions before we close it down. Okay. Perfect. Um, so the first question Christine is asking, do you recommend bringing both a curling wand and a flat iron? And I guess if you had to pick one or the other, which one would you prioritize? Uh, that is absolutely a preference because uh, with a curling iron, you don't have the option to straighten, but with a straightening iron, you have the option to curl. So you just have to practice. And I always tell everybody, go to YouTube University, learn how to use it. And use. I would bring the straightening iron in that particular case. I would. Awesome. And Bianca from your community, one of your friends, she's asking, should we deep condition more often? I'm guessing that's a hair related question. Um, so yeah, how, how often would you recommend people deep condition? Well, I think that that's according to the hair. I have extremely fine hair, so I can't do mine more than about once a week, but that does include sleeping uh, in it. So uh, I think that that's going to be one of those things that you have to judge if your hair is all limp and you can't do anything with it. You know you're, you're conditioning too often, and if you're not, you're conditioning. Um, not enough it's staying dry so it's one of those personal preferences that you have to play around with you know so yeah trial and error a little bit um cool I'll, I'll close it down i have one question myself so i'm a big fan of queer eye i don't know if you watch that show on netflix it's wonderful it makes everybody happy um and there's jo jonathan van ness he's in charge of like kind of personal grooming and he always asks everybody what is your morning routine so i feel like you with so much knowledge in this subject i would love to know like whatever country you're in in the world, when you wake up in the morning, sort of what is your morning routine that you go through? What are your like core products you use? How do you spend that first 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, for me particularly, I think it's important to have your face super clean at night. So I always wash my face twice and then I put on lots and lots of cream. And don't forget, no matter how young you are, men and women, make sure that you always include your neck as part of your face. It, it, Decolletage. So it, it's it, it's um, it's important to put on lots of cream, and I do that at night. In the morning, I generally wash one time, uh, sometimes twice, this according, and then I put on a lighter cream for that. Um, I take really good care of my teeth, and I think that's very important. And the, and the pulling, the using the coconut oil to gargle uh, with and keep in your mouth for about 10 minutes is a really great thing to try and get in the habit of doing. Uh, it actually tastes really nice and then you're getting a little bit more moisture into your body. Uh, let's see what else. And um, I, I'm a really low maintenance kind of gal. And that's the reason why I came up with this thing for you guys, because <clears throat> I wanted to condense all that uh, information that I got from and all that time that I spent. So I'm one of these people that's ready in 10 minutes if I can, I can do it, but I do take good care of my uh, skin and try to take good care of my body as well. Awesome. And a couple actually more questions came through. Uh -huh. So we'll take one more minute here. Um, Torbid, Torib, sorry if I mispronounced your name, asking um, any suggestions for frizz in humid climates? So somebody that their hair goes crazy in a humid climate, do you have any like pro tips for them? Yeah, there are some great products out there now. I would look at Brazilian Blowout. Uh, they have a balm that's really good to help you kind of control and contain your hair. Um, the very best thing that you could do, again, is go to YouTube University. There is actually a group there. I think it's called Curly Hair, and I think it's on Facebook as well. But it's people who specialize in uh, curly heads of hair. There's also gray hair uh, groups, and there's curly hair groups. And I would go there and look at those products, order them from Amazon, and know that you can send everything back if it doesn't work. Because this is a rabbit hole, and until you find your product, then you are going to be continually trying uh, different products. So make sure that you're going to buy it, purchase it from somewhere you can take it back to if it doesn't work for you. Uh, and that's one reason why I love Amazon so much because we can do that. Um, once you find a product that does work for you, make sure you have it bought up if you need to keep it in the freezer or whatever <laughs> because if the company stops selling your product or if you come on a trip and you don't have the product with you, you're going to wish you had. So I highly recommend you kind of judge how much of that product you're using daily or weekly, and then try to make sure that you have enough for each month that you travel. We're on a four month journey. I know some of you are on a 12 month journey. So make sure that you have enough product because sometimes um, sending it through the mail is not such a great idea. 
uh, it, it might not get to you. So I would bring that along. So I, I hope that helps some of your question. It is a tough, uh, uh, frizzy hair is a tough thing. It really is. So I hope you find the product that you need. And I'll just mention like, you know, now that our community is so large, there's a Slack channel called Unite Kinky Curlies, I think. And it's for people that have that particular like, hair type or give each other advice on different products or hair salons or hairstylists in certain cities that specialize in, you know, interesting different types of hair. So there's a lot, there's a lot of information out there on Slack living there too, of people that you can connect with to ask about those types of questions. I think that is so, I think that's such a great thing too. That's part of the reason why I love this community because I can reach out and find out anything that I need to know anytime. Exactly. Um, and hopefully this is one of those resources that people in the community use in the future too. So thank you for doing this, Melissa. It's really awesome of you. And I know like we put this together pretty quickly and you were like really willing to like kind of rush it through to make it happen for today for everybody in the nation. So I really do appreciate you. Thanks to everybody that joined. Um, and we'll be back in two weeks with the next knowledge drop. But have a great day, everybody. All right. Enjoy your journey, everybody.